Hello guys, welcome back to Take Dose. And in this video, we will look at Alice and Bob playing flower game problem, which is from lead code number 3021. Let's now look at the problem statement. In this problem, Alice and Bob are playing a turn based game on a field with two lanes of flowers between them. There are X flowers in the first lane between Alice and Bob and Y flowers in the second lane between them. So consider that Alice is on one side and Bob is on the other side and there are two given lanes on which flowers are arranged. The game proceeds as follows. Alice takes the first turn. In each turn a player must choose either one of the lane and pick one flower from that side. That means Alice can take either of these two flowers from its side and Bob can take e either of these two adjacent flowers from its side. At the end of the turn, if there are no flowers left at all, the current player captures their opponent and wins the game. So let's say that Alice had taken this flower, Bob had uh, taken this flower from its side. Again, Alice took the second flower, Bob took the second flower. As soon as this happens, then this entire lane is empty. And so in the Alice's turn, Alice can capture Bob and so Alice can win. This is just one possibility, right? Now given two integers N and M. N and M. The task is to compute the number of possible pairs x, y that satisfy the conditions. Alice must win the game according to the described rules. The number of flowers x in the first lane must be in the range of 1 to n and the number of flowers y in the second lane must be in the range of 1 to m. So here according to these three rules mentioned we want to maintain that Alice must win that's the first thing and then given a number n like let's say if n was equals to 5 then in the first lane you you are free to choose one flower or two flower or three flower or four flower or five flower okay so it is up to us to choose the number of flowers in the range of 1 to n that's what it is saying and also the same goes for the second lane that given a number m uh, we are free to choose any number of flowers like let's say m equals to 3 then we can choose either one flower or two flower or three flower so we have to try with all these possibilities mn combinations and uh, for each of these combinations we might have to find out if alice wins or not so let's say that in this case if m is equals to you know if n is equals to 5 and m is equals to 3 then if n was set to 1 then m can assume any value in the range of 1 to m it can be 1 to 3 or if n was equals to 2 then again m can assume any value from 1 to 3 so you can imagine that the total number of uh, problems that we will be solving here will be order of mn problems okay now if you have order of mn problems then how many problems do you actually have looking at the constraint you will be having 10 to the power of 10 problems and if each of the problem you can even solve it in let's say order of one time whether you can solve it or not is a separate question but if you can solve it in order of one time then it will give you TLE because the total computations will still be 10 to the power of 10. So since we want to solve it within one second I need less than 10 to the power 8 computation. So the worst thing that I can do is m log n or n log m. I cannot exceed this value. Okay so it can either be order of 1 or m plus n or m log n plus n log m something like that but not greater than uh, this particular value to pass within one second okay so i think you have understood the constraint and what is the time complexity expectation now if you look at this first example where n is equals to m and m equals to 2 i can create any combination let's create uh, two flowers in the first lane and two flowers in the second lane and if you have alice and bob then if Alice starts then will Alice win if the game is optimal then Alice can choose this first flower and Bob can choose this first flower from its side now Alice is left to choose between these two flowers right so if Alice chooses any of these flowers let's say it chooses the first flower the first lane becomes empty and Bob can capture Alice and so Bob wins even if Alice had chosen the second flower then second lane will become empty and Bob will again capture Alice and win right so I need to try out all the MN combinations and see in how many combination Alice wins and definitely the brute force approach is not something that we want. So in order to optimize the complexity let's look at an observation. Let's think that uh, we have n number of flowers for the first lane and uh, Alice is on one side Bob is on the other side. So I know that the range of flowers that I can uh, actually generate as a configuration is from 1 to n. 
So if I have one flower, who will win? If Alice always starts, then Alice will be forced to take a flower in its turn. And so if he takes the flower, then the lane will be empty. And so Bob will capture Alice. And so Bob will win. Alice will not win. If I had, let's say, two flowers, then who will win? If I have two flowers, then Alice can take one flower. Bob will be forced to take the other flower. Then a turn of Alice will come and Alice can capture Bob and Alice will win. Now, if you have three flowers, then who will win? Alice will take this flower. Bob will take the other flower. Alice will be taking the third flower. Now that uh, entire lane becomes empty in Bob's turn. So Bob will capture Alice and Bob will win, right? So you will notice that if you have odd number of flowers, then Bob will always win on a single lane. And if you have even number of flowers, then Alice will always win. That will always happen. So this is just for a single lane. This is one of the most important observation of this problem. Now let's extend this to two lanes. And let's assume uh, that we are taking 1 to n value in the first lane and 1 to m value in the second lane. And let's try to take with the smallest possible value. Both m and n are greater than or equals to 1. As you know that in the constraint section it was mentioned they will both be greater than or equals to 1. So let's create a smallest sub problem. Okay, so this is the smallest combination. Now, if Alice has to start, Alice will have to take any one of this. And if Alice is forced to take any one of this, then Bob will find one of the lanes empty. And so Bob can attack Alice. And so Bob can win. Okay. So it does not matter whether Alice takes the first flower from the first lane or the first flower from the second lane. One of the lanes will become empty and Bob will capture Alice. Now, what happens if you keep one a flower in the first lane but you increase the number of flowers in the second lane if you do that then alice will not take the flower in the first lane but it will take flower from the second lane and so bob will only be left with one of these two options and so if he takes any of these two options let's say this one then alice can capture bob and alice will definitely win now if you again increase uh, the flowers by one count on the second lane then you will find that Alice will lose because Alice will take this flower, Bob will take this flower and so Alice will be left with one option from the first lane, one option from the second lane and you know that uh, Alice is not going to win there. Okay. For this example, you will find that if I have just a single flower in the first lane, then depending on uh, the count of flowers in the second lane, either Alice wins or Bob wins. So if you have one flower, Bob wins. If you have two flower, Alice wins. If you have three flowers, Bob will win. If you have four flower, Alice will win and so on. So it will keep on alternating if you have one flower in the first lane. Now what happens if you have two flowers in the first lane? So let's say that if you have two flowers in the first lane. Now if you just have one flower in the second lane and Alice is on one side, Bob is on the other side, then Alice can take this flower and again, Bob will be left with this problem of one flower on one side and one flower on the other side. So whichever flower Bob will take, Alice can attack in its turn and Alice will win. So in this case, Alice wins. Now, if you increase the flower, you will see that Bob will win in this case. Okay, because if Alice will take this flower, Bob will take this flower. And then Alice will be left with the problem of one, one, one flower in one lane and one flower in the second lane. So in this case, you will find that Bob wins. Again, if you increase the flower, Alice wins. If you increase the flower, Bob wins. So this is an alternating pattern. If you have, let's say, three flowers in the first lane, then if you start with one flower, Bob will win. If you start with two flower, Alice will win. If you have three flower, Bob will win and so on. So you will find a pattern repeating here. You will find that if you have odd count, if you have odd count in the, in the first lane, then depending on if you have even count in the second lane, Alice will always win. And if you have even count in the first lane, then depending on if you have odd count in the second lane, Alice will always win. So this is a very important observation. This has been derived from our previous observation for a single lane and we have just extended it to two lanes. So having known that we have n number of, uh, you know, options of taking flowers from one to n, if let's say the n value is equals to 5 and the m value is equals to 3, then how many odd number of flowers can you have in the first lane? You can have 1, 3 and 5, isn't it? And that you can find easily by doing n plus 1 by 2. 
that is the odd count of the number of lots that you can have in the first lane and what is the even uh, configuration that means the even count of lots that you can have in the second lane it can only be two here okay which you can find by simply by doing three by two which is one so what will be the total number of ways in which you take odd count in the first lane and even count in the second lane and Alice still wins it will be three ways into one way which is going to be three ways and similarly what will be the total number of ways in which you take even count in the first lane and odd count in the second lane if you want to take even count in the first lane then here it will be 2 comma 4 these are the two combinations and here uh, odd combinations will be 1 comma 3 which is again two combinations so 2 times 2 will be 4 so 4 ways so total ways in which Alice wins here will be 3 plus 4 which is going to be 7 I hope it is clear now in order to find the even and odd count it is just order of one time so if you can just take a simple dry run as an example then what I will be doing here is let's say that you have a total n value of 4 and m value of 5 so what you got to do is to find the odd count odds in this n how many odds are there you can simply do n plus 1 by 2 so that is 2 odds and what is the even in m even in m is you can just do m by 2 which will be 5 by 2 2 so so what are the total number of ways in which alice wins so if alice has to win and you want to maintain odd count of flower in the first lane you should you must have even count of flower in the second lane so there will be four ways here okay now another way would be to maintain even count of flowers in the first lane then you should have odd count of flowers in the second lane so how many even count will be there in the first lane n by 2 which will be 4 by 2 2 2 count okay which will be 2 comma 4 here and how many odd count will be there in the second lane that will be m plus 1 by 2 which will be 3 count you can say that it will be 1 3 5 isn't it so how many total ways are there Th 3 times 2 that is 6 so the total ways in which Alice can win is total 10 ways that will be 6 plus 4 so how much time it will take to calculate n plus 1 by 2 m by 2 and so on so we are just doing 4 calculations so the time complexity is going to be order of 1 and definitely space complexity will also be order of 1 I hope this solution is clear let's now look at the code if you are someone who is looking to prepare for top product based company within a limited time of just three months then we have brought for you both the DSA and the system design live interview training program the most important feature of this program is you get a filtered and condensed structured curriculum in-depth discussion of all the topics and my guarantee of your understanding one-on-one -on -one guidance with me and live weekend classes to know more about the training you can whatsapp us on this given number in this problem we are given the n and m value and uh, the first case is we maintain odd count in the first lane and the even count in the second lane and using that you will get total combinations or you could have also maintained even count in the first lane so you have to maintain odd count in the second lane and, and using that you will get certain combinations now you just add them up and uh, you will get the total count of ways in which Alice wins if Alice starts the game okay so I hope this entire solution is clear if you still have any doubt then feel free to comment below and I'll try to help you as soon as possible see you guys in the next video thank you